Frank Gambino is a great artist and life drawing teacher. This video has Frank's insights about charcoal, finding your way as an artist, failed drawings, anatomy, and drawing hair. Hi, my name's Kenzo and this is Love Life Drawing. Frank is great at explaining things in a really down to earth and relaxed way. I went round to his flat, he drew me and we talked and this video has some highlights of that conversation. There's another highlight video all about drawing techniques. I'll link to it below, check it out after this one. And I'm gonna show more examples of Frank's great drawings during the video too. Let's get started. The way that you need to think about charcoal is that it has to be pliable. Uh, and I mean, you saw that I've got quite a few sort of clay sculptures. It's like working with clay. You, you're sort of moving everything around. You know, you're not settling with anything, especially in the early stages. You're just making sure that you're just putting stuff down. If I was using pen and ink, I'd be more inclined to, let's say I was going to do your hairline up here. Uh, I'd be, I'd be more inclined to do that. Feel, pretend that I'm actually drawing on you, but not actually press the charcoal down or press the, the ink down. So I'm feeling that I'm actually drawing it on you, but then when I get to the point where I want to make the mark, put it down. That's right. I mean, I'm happy to pick up any anything that works from anybody. Uh, I'll 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 use, I'll, uh, and even things that have eventually been things that I've never used again, I'll try them out. Um, but generally, what I found, I mean, going back to the idea of art college, like I sort of. When I was a kid, I liked drawing pictures. Uh, and then through doing that, I ended up doing art. And of course, like most people's experience of going to college, it sort of just put me off the subject. Uh, <laughs> so so when, when I left college, I no longer sort of knew what it was that I liked about the thing that I'd really liked, like drawing and painting. So there was a part of me that just wanted to get that back. So what I did was I just went to drawing classes and I drew and drew and drew and just waited for something to happen. Uh, then eventually what happened was that the drawing basically started to tell me what my work looked like. Uh, it told me. So, and I've said this about my stuff, it's sort of law of averages. I just keep drawing. Every so often I do something decent. But I learned something along the way through doing those pictures that don't work. Most of the pictures I do, I don't really rate. But every so often, I'll just surprise myself and I'll go, yeah, that's it's that interesting thing. It's like, I don't know what I want, but when it happens, I know it's happened. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. And I think sometimes you can get, you know, when you, your own drawings, you see all of them. Yeah. And everybody else's, you only see the very, the thing that, the curated thing or the thing that they put on Instagram yeah. which is like the best thing out of 50 things that they did yeah and so you think oh, most of my stuff's rubbish and 100% of everybody else's stuff is so good yeah but uh, that's definitely not not the case right it's certainly not the way it works for me <laughs> if you, if you <laughs> maybe like. it, it's like that for someone uh, you know what? I, I, I'd be really surprised if it was. I'd be yeah. willing to. I, I'd almost be willing to put a bet on that. But like, um, yeah, there may be somebody out there, and I'm sure that there were people who were just born naturals or just picked up the technique marvelously, who just everything worked. Mm. But you know, you, you hear stories about like you know uh, Michelangelo burning drawings just uh, like later on in his life because he was a bit worried that people were going to see them <laughs> and it, 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 I mean, I'm sure that they were like a million times better than anything I ever could ever do in fact I know they were uh, but um, you know like even Michelangelo my god and it's it's interesting because I was saying about photography I'm, I'm quite influenced by photography and one of my favorite artists is Diane Arbus um, I, I really like her work um, and photography is a prime example of like you take lots and lots of pictures and you go home, you, t you check the contact strip and you look for the one that you like. Oh, Picasso didn't seem to do that. I mean, Picasso is an interesting one because you do get to see his, his bad stuff. Um, yeah, he just seemed to put everything up. So I suppose, yeah, there are some, some artists that aren't so bothered. There's a lot of courage and 
like security in that being able to put everything out yeah I'm, I'm fine with that kind of thing as well because I do think it's not that brave, really, when you think about it. I mean, something like Air Sea Rescue is probably much more... <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just a drawing, mate. I know, I know what it is. I understand why people get sensitive and stuff, and I yeah. do. Um, but it's sort of... It's not the most dangerous thing that can happen. And actually, generally, what you tend to find is that people are just quite impressed that you actually sort of spent the time and did it. Right. Uh, I, I think that sort of... Um, uh, like if you're doing anything creative you have to accept that there's an aspect where you're going to be vulnerable um, and you sort of have to learn to sort of let go of that I think uh, I think it's a uh, it depends what you're trying to do again if you're if it's important to you like you everybody sort of does art for themselves though the the viewer is an aspect of that like I don't think of who's going to look at my work when I'm doing it but then eventually you do sort of show it to people. And I think if you're too worried about that sort of vulnerability uh, or the or the getting it, like, the criticism, yeah, you're not really going to move forward, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, why do you need to... I mean, I go to classes and somebody will sort of start giving me all these names and stuff, and it's just like, I don't, you know, like... It's that Shakespeare thing, you know, a rose by any name, other, other name is just as, smells just as sweet. It's like, I don't need to know what it's called, I just need to know what it looks like. Yeah. And I don't need to know what it looks like under the skin. When you, like, um, cut someone open. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, you look at those 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 anatomy uh, things where the, the person's got no skin. I mean, if somebody walked into the studio like that, <laughs> I wouldn't draw them. <laughs> Call an, I'd call an ambulance. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'd be horrified. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to be dismissive about it, and there's nothing, uh, and it doesn't hurt to know these things, and it doesn't hurt to know where all the muscles are. I, right. I did this thing where um, it was putting sort of uh, muscles on people's on skulls, like uh, sort of with plasticine, so mm-hmm. you were getting where the muscles were. It doesn't hurt, it, and it, it, it's a useful thing to know. But it, it, I think a lot of things that people sort of hear about sort of drawing and stuff it's like once I've learned this thing once I've learned it properly then I'll be able to draw and what that does is it puts people off from drawing it they feel that they need to learn everything about anatomy and really if you want to learn to draw what you do is you draw right do you see what I mean and you know and you will eventually pick things up uh, and you'll see stuff I don't really like people sort of say oh you you know you've got a good understanding of anatomy and I sort of say I am first foggiest idea of it. <laughs> you know, I don't know what any of it's called or what it does yeah. um, but that's not really anything I'm drawing that's actually 100% true I think I do think that if you're drawing from your imagination yeah that's that's true It's the thing I always say, like if I'm in the class and somebody says to me, like, how many heads are there on, 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 a, on a figure? Is there like seven or is it uh, or is it eight? I, I can never remember. And it's like, it's just the one, you know? <laughs> it's like above the shoulders, you can't miss it, mate. <laughs> it's like, it's just not, uh, you're right. Unless the person is standing bolt upright, straight in front of you, yeah. there's so many other things to take into consideration. The angle that you're at, the angle that they're at, the pose that they're in like uh, I've been drawing a contortionist recently like I have no idea how, how many heads would fit into that it's like it's you know you can fit her in a box it's yeah. sort of so um, that one doesn't really work for me I, I don't really understand and, I, and, and it's sort of time I get a, I get a little bit sort of it's funny because people do sort of desperately want to know that because they think it's some kind of sort of thing that's going to help them and I've tried to use it. Like I said, generally, if I'm slagging something off, I've tried it over and over again and it hasn't worked. Have you got a, a specific approach or...? I sort of. It's going to be hard to show with yours, though, because <laughs> <laughs> that's the only problem. Yeah. But, but basically, and you may have heard me say this in the class, like I think that generally hair if you're doing a portrait hair is just as important as the features but like if I'm drawing somebody with a lot going on in their hair like say somebody who's got their hair plaited 
blonde hair tends to sort of have a lot going on in it. Um, like I could spend, say, um, like, I don't know, 50% uh, of the drawing doing the face and the other 50% of the drawing doing the hair just wow. to get that right. Oh, I think that would surprise people. Generally, like, the way that I tend to explain it with hair, uh, and again, it's not doesn't totally apply to you, um, but it does a bit, is that I've, I'll first draw the shape of what I'm seeing. So I'll draw the structure of it in the same way that I've drawn the structure of your face before I start to put in the lights and darks. Mm -hmm. uh, then I'll put in a mid-tone, <clears throat> like, often across the whole thing, uh, because the mid-tone gives me a chance to lighten up or, or dark darken the areas that are lighter and darker and then the bit that everybody does first of all which is the sort of hair shape is pretty much the last thing I do like the sort of strands strands yeah right yeah because <clears throat> normally because people start with that what they end up with is something very flat uh, and formless so they spend ages getting the figure right and then suddenly everything goes flat where the hair is or because it's all just strands which are evenly like kind of without anything to yeah. indicate this so you go shape first yeah and then strands yeah and so for strands it's not like you're trying to get all the strands that you no. can see but maybe an indication of so that the eye knows this is what yeah. the texture looks like and it can kind of extrapolate yeah. that little bit you tell it one of the things that I say in the class is that once you start seeing that kind of stuff you start seeing far too much so you've right. got to sort of pull back and not put everything in Okay, thank you so much to Frank again for doing that video with us. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do so. We've got some great stuff coming out over the next few months. Thank you as always for your support and your comments. They really motivate us and keep us going. And why not check out some of our other great videos? There's some up on the screen here.